Hey kids, so great to be back with you this week. Now, we are gonna be showing a video that we showed before, but it is so important to what we're doing as the church because we're going through a whole series on what the mission of the church is. And this week, it begins on how we love God, love others, and make disciples. We're so glad you're here. Hey kids, it's great to see you again. You know, this last week, I had an awesome time with my family. I wanna show you a picture of my family. Here they are. Aren't they awesome? I love my family. Now, we had a great time this last week, didn't we? Bing bong. Yeah. We, we played Boom. games together, which is so much fun. We ate Boom. meals together. Oh, it was so good, wasn't it? And you know what I, we also had to do? We Boom. went water skiing. Oh man, they did so good. Now, wait a second. Is that Boom. my family? No, that's just a house. That's just the bricks that make it, the paint on the outside. That's not my family. This is my family. I love my family. My family are people, right? Because your family is made up of the people, your mom and your dad, your sister and your brother. Well now, think of the church. When we think of the church, we can think of something like this, right? Where we can think, well, we go to church. You wanna know something? That's not the church. This is the church, whoa! Because the church is God's people. We don't go to church, we are the church. And when we come together and we live as God's people, He has a purpose for us. He has a plan for us. And as God's family, we want to live out that purpose. Well, what is that? As a church, our purpose is this, to love God, to love others, and to make disciples. That's our passion. And when we are in the church, that means we're the family of God. That you're my brother or my sister and I'm your brother. And the picture is this, when God sends us on a journey, this is what he wants us to do. Now, Jesus gave us two really important verses that show us how to live this way. Let me share with you the first one. Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment and in Mark 12, 30 through 31, he said, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Jesus said the most important thing in our lives is to love God. Well, what is love? Well, let me ask you this question. What are some of your favorite things? Is it uh, raindrops on roses, uh, bright copper kettles, or what was the other one? Um, whiskers on mittens, is that what it was? No. Well, what about this? What about monster Sunday, Sunday, trucks? Sunday. Or American girl dolls? Girls or what about smartphones? Hello? Hello? Now, we can look at all of our favorite things and we can value those things. But what's more valuable than that? What's more important than all these things? God. God outweighs all of them because he is more valuable than anything that we could find in this life. Godly love is sacrifice. And when we truly love God, we're willing to sacrifice things of lesser value because of a greater value of knowing God. And God showed us this love and that he sacrificed for us. He sent his son Jesus to die for us. He went to the cross to pay for our sins. And then he rose from the dead to give us life so that we can live in a relationship with him so we can love him. But our relationship with him, it cost him something too. And he values the relationship you have with him. And so he wants us to love him and value him more than anything else. But it's not just part of who we are, it's everything we are. Look at the next part of this verse. Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Wow, heart, soul, mind, and strength. We're to love God with all of those. Well, we love God first with our heart. Well, that's my passion. That's all the excitement in me. That's everything that I long for and drive for means that that passion in my life is for God. But then I love him with my soul. Well, what is that? That's my life. 
That's my, my spirit. That's not only uh, my emotions, but that's my talents and my drives and everything that God has made up of my life. It means everything in my life is for him because I love him more than anything. But then, what about this? Loving God with your mind. Now, loving God with your mind is very important because it's like this. If I was to say, um, I want you to think of pancakes, a lot of pancakes with syrup and butter and ooey gooeyness that's so good and some cinnamon yes what are you thinking about right now are you hungry for pancakes well probably why because what we think about we long for when we love god with our mind it means we're thinking about who god is and when we think about god and how awesome he is and all he has done for us it drives our love for him and it changes the way we act why? Because look at the last one, strength. When you love him with your heart, with your spirit, and with your mind, you put all those things together and the strength of your life, the power in your life is to live for him. So all the talents he's given to you, you use for him. All of the energy he's given to you, even if you're playing on a sports field, it's for him because he is worth all of it. Now let's put this all together. If we're called to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength, and you bring all these pieces together, what does it form? It forms you. You see, we love God with all of these things. And if you take one piece away, that's not loving God. Why? Because he wants us to love him with everything we are and all of our heart. That's what we want too. But what do we do with this love? Now look at the next part of this verse. Jesus gave us the second greatest commandment in Mark 12, 31, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, I'm to love my neighbor as myself, meaning I'm to love others. Well, how do I love my neighbor as myself? Well, I'll feed myself, I'll take care of myself, I'll sleep when I'm tired and God is saying to love other people, to feed them, to care for them, to love them and show them their greatest need, which is God. But who is my neighbor? Well, is it the person that I live next door to? Well, yeah, absolutely. What about the person next to them? Yeah. What about the people on your sports teams? What about the kids in your class or in the church? Listen, anybody God brings into your life, he has called you to love and to show them that the greatest need in their life is God. And the way we show that is the way God showed that love for us, is we're willing to sacrifice ourselves for them. God's standard of love is perfect, but do we love people perfectly all the time? No, we don't. You know, it's easy to be hurt by somebody it's easy to hurt somebody else. And we don't always love people the way we should. We don't love with a pure love all the time. But this is the love of God. And God will forgive us when we fail. Which means that when other people fail us, we must forgive them and show them grace. Because when we show them forgiveness and grace, we're showing them love. When people show that to us, they're showing us love. But it's not their love, it's God's love. And that's what strengthens us. So we might not always do it perfectly, but he is always there to perfect us, to draw us back to him. So when we love God, we can then love others. So look what Jesus is saying. The purpose of the church is to love God, to love others, and this last part, to make disciples. Now, Jesus said in, oh, oh, I guess we're out of time. Well, listen, when we come back next time, we're going to be talking about what Jesus called us to do and to make disciples. A disciple is somebody who worships Christ, walks with Christ, works for Christ, and witnesses for Christ. Oh, yeah. Oh, and he's got something to share with you too. We'll see you next time.